Charlie, this song is so fun to sing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so okay. fun to sing. It's okay. It's so fun. for you every week there is always an appointed time where we put aside all of the things in our day in our week to just come before the Lord and I believe this would be your time to just be refreshed in the presence of God amen, amen. and you know I don't feel any distance with you we are right here worshiping together and you know today it is not just me and uh, I would like to uh, let you join in with the band and all of us today today we have Sean and he's gonna lead us in worship today together. And not only Sean and myself, we also have Brian, the very familiar face that you know. And so as one family, you know, we're not separated by any distance in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Today I invite you to open up your heart, open up your, your home, open up your, uh, just, just your spirit to praise and worship the Lord. Whenever we praise the Lord, you see heaven open. And today I pray that heaven will be open over us today, amen. And so let's give our best to God today. Amen. You may be sitting down, you may be standing up, but we give our best. Amen. We want to give our all to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I pass the time to Brian. Let's Hallelujah. Pray Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters, let's praise the Lord together. We are going to give the best to our Lord because our Lord deserves it. Hallelujah. Let us clap our hands together. Warm ourselves up, okay? Here we go! Bukan kasih Yang sejati tiada pernah berubah Hanya di dalammu Yesus Tuhanku Kasih yang tiada kau beri Lebih segala yang terbaik dalammu Dapat kesudahan kekal selamanya Raise our hands Kini ku bawa kepadamu Hidupku sebagai persembahan Terimalah pujian dari hatiku Hanyalah untukmu yang terbaik hanyalah bagimu hanya untuk yang termulia berkenan bagimu yang itu ku bersinta bagi kemuliaan dan keagungan Tuhan kebesaran Here we go again. Sing louder. Kasih yang tak kau beri lebih segala yang terbaik dalammu dapat kesudahan kekal selamanya. 
bawa kepadamu hidupku sebagai persembahan terimalah pujian dari hatiku hanyalah untukmu kupian terbaik hanya Baik, Haleluya. God is able. One more time, you go. Ba 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 ra, ba ba ra ba ra, ba 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 ra, ba ba ra ba ra, ba 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 ra, ba ba ra ba ra, ba 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 ra, ba ba ra ba ra, ba 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 ra, ba ba ra ba ra, ba 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 ra. Yang termulia berkenan bagimu Biar hidupku bersinar bagi kemuliaan dan keagunganmu Tuhan Kebesaranmu ku beri segalanya Terbaik. Yes, Lord, we give you the best. Let's give all praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, my FGACYC family. As we sing this song today, uh, if you can stand up in your living room, in your bedroom, we're gonna dance a little bit with this song, yeah? Because everything is okay. Are you good? Put your hands together, clap along. We sing. Open up my eyes so I may see you. Every moment you have been with me. So I lift my hands. Now I lift my hands And I raise my voice In Jesus' name my troubles melt away Now we're gonna dance together like this, follow me It's okay, that's a brighter day yeah. It's okay, God will make a way Now my heart is filled with praise My soul, hands up! Hallelujah, it's okay! It's okay. Joy inside, it's okay, God is by my side. I will dance, I will sing, everything's okay. Hands together now. You're looking good, FGA. Woo! One more time, we're all gonna sing together. Are you ready? Let's go. Open up my eyes so I may see every moment. Every moment you have been with me Now I lift my hands And I raise my voice In Jesus' name my troubles melt away. Are you ready in your living room? Let's go! It's okay, there's a brighter day yeah. It's okay, God will make a way now my heart is filled with praise, my soul sings, hallelujah. 
It's okay, I feel joy inside It's okay, God is by my side I will dance, I will sing Everything's okay So you guys remember the dance move? We're all going to, the, going to do the dance move together Are you ready? Yeah. So we're going to follow all of us, yeah? With your okay sign We're going to go two times to the left Ready and Two times to the right Everybody, we sing. It's okay, there's a brighter day. Yeah, it's okay, God will make a way. Now my heart is filled with praise. My soul sings, Hallelujah. It's okay, I feel joy inside. Dance with us. It's okay. God is by my side I will dance I will sing Everything so Let's bring it up a little bit It's okay There's a brighter day Jump up It's okay God will make a way yeah. Now my heart is filled with grace My soul sings Hallelujah It's okay I feel joy inside It's okay God is by my side I will dance, I will sing, everything's okay. I will dance, I will sing. I will dance, I will sing, everything's okay. Yeah, yeah. I will dance, I will sing, cause everything's okay. Let's have a shout of Woo! praise, FGA. Hallelujah. 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 Wow. You know, today it's good to praise the Lord. And when we come before Him, He is the Almighty God. Amen. At the same time, He is our Father. And He really is the person who cares for you. You know, sometimes we may feel after a long time, I've come to a place of loneliness. Where nobody really understands us. Or maybe we come to a place where we do not find any open doors. Everywhere is shut. But today, I pray that as we bow before the King of Kings, as we humble ourselves in worship today, you would find the grace of God flowing into your heart, flowing into your life, and flowing through your family, flowing through your workplace, flowing through your studies. If you believe that today, I invite you just to lift your hands and say, Lord, I come before you. I run to you. Who do I have in heaven but you? Lord, today there is nothing on earth that we desire besides you. Lord, our heart and our strength, many times they may fail. But today there is one truth that will always remain. That God is the one who is our strength. He is our courage. And today we run to him. We bow before the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands today and come before Join us and sing. So here I bow. So here I bow. 
us, let us pray the Spirit. One, two, three, shut up. comes down as we humble ourselves in prayer and in worship we lift our hearts before him come on my friends in our workplace today lord be lifted high in our church be lifted high in our nation be lifted high in our families lifted high over our assignments lifted high over our problems oh lord we lift you jesus because we want to praise you lord
loving you, Lord, we ask that you would open heaven upon us. That today, Lord, heaven will come down through the word of God that will speak straight into our hearts. And give us courage, give us the strength we need. Father, we pray for your anointing to fill your people today. That they would feel that God is by their side today. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We lift our souls, our spirit to you, O oh God. Receive us today. And Lord, today we want to receive you into our hearts in return. Come into our life. Come into our homes. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. in his way he will provide at just the perfect time at just the perfect time everything everything is good and right for in his way he will provide to believe this life of mine to bless Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we know you are here. Good morning, church. Good morning. Very quickly, this let's turn to the books of Acts chapter 11, verse 1 to 18. I believe all of you were blessed throughout the FJ conference preached by Pastor Philip. And last week, Pastor Jonathan had also given us a conclusion or a summary of what to do next as a church. And today I'm going to continue from this theme of forward with strength and courage. And I hope that through the scripture, through the words of God, all of us will be blessed, not just in our ministry, but also in your day-to-day -day life, in marketplace, in your family, in the things that is going on right now, things that is troubling you. I pray that the Lord will open up your heart so that you will be receptive towards His words, because through the spirit of receptive, which is for sure, the word of the Holy Spirit is always to open up a new thing in your life. And therefore, being receptive means being open up our hearts towards His word. And through that, things will happen and things will change. Let's very quickly look at books of Acts chapter 11, verse 1 to 4 first. Here it says, Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. Pause for a moment. Here what happened is, Peter went to the uncircumcised man, which is Cornelius. In the books of Acts chapter 10, which is one chapter earlier, if you read it again, you will realize that Peter had went to Cornelius' house. Why? To preach the gospel and to lay hand on them and the Holy Spirit fall upon them. The baptism of the Holy Spirit began to happen to the first ever Gentiles in the Bible. Gentiles means those who were not of Jews. So here it was recorded that the very first act of revival, act of the Holy Spirit among the Gentiles never happened before because all this while, salvation or the gospel is only given to the Jews. Right from Acts chapter 1 until Acts chapter 10, there were like almost like 10 or 20 years in Jerusalem whereby after the day of Pentecost, the gospel was spread rapidly among the Jews. But here, in the books of Acts chapter 11, here recorded that Peter were told by the Holy Spirit to went to the house of Cornelius, who is a Gentile. And the entire family were being baptized and got saved on that very day. Therefore, the apostles was one. And the brothers, the, all the disciples of Jesus, those who were gathered together at the upper room to receive the Holy Spirit, they then criticized Peter. The Bible says, verse 2, they then questioned him. They don't understand why, Peter, you eat with the uncircumcised men. Why do you do that? You know what? Most of the time in life, when we try to move forward, or there are times when 
you felt that the Holy Spirit is moving you to do certain things in your life, not just ministry, but in your marriage or in the marketplace, you are being moved by the Holy Spirit with signs, not just by your own touch, but that there were signs because later you will read that Peter was being told by the Holy Spirit to move to the house of Cornelius three times, repeatedly. And there were times when we tried to do something good for the Lord, when you try to do good things for, for the sake of the gospel, when you try to make certain decisions for the benefit of your family or your career or your certain relationship, then you will realize there are times where commotions begin to arise. There were misunderstanding. You, have, you felt threatened, you felt being criticized, you felt being attacked at the very time. Because you had made an unpopular decision. Do you know what church? Here Peter had made an unpopular decision because he himself is a Jew. And it's impossible for the Jew to sit and eat with the Gentiles. It's not proper to do so. And it's against their Jewish custom. He had made an unpopular decision and such decision had caused him trouble. Had invited criticism and argument and commotion in his community in his friendship, in his network. Moreover, Peter moved too fast without discussion, without having meeting with the team of the apostle. He just moved by his own. You know, there are times, you know, there's an urgency being placed in your heart. And you know that you got to react and respond now and then because if not, you will be too late already. Of course, I'm not saying like this to give you a green light to make your own decision in every matters of your life. No, there are times you need to discuss uh, with your wife, with your boss, with your colleagues, with your team, with your pastor, with your leaders. But there are times in, in moments like this when the Holy Spirit asks you to do certain things with a very sure signal, very convincing and convicted signal, then you realize that there are times you move too fast that your team couldn't follow. People around you, including your loved one, they don't understand. And they say, Papa, why are you moving like this? You move too fast. In such situation, what you need to do is this, my friend. Verse 4, it say Peter began to explain to them in order. What you need to do when you face with such situation is that in order for you to move forward, with strength and courage, when there are commotion arises, when people do not understand you entirely, you have to be patient and explain to them nicely and soundly. Explain to them, even though it already happened, even though you already decided and you already make a move. And it may be too late for you to, to retreat or to retract the decision certain things that you have done. I'm saying all this is, what I mean is good thing or right thing to do. When you are being placed in such situation, remember, remember, it's okay sometimes. There are certain commotion, misunderstanding, argument. It's okay. It's, it's normal, my friends. In a marriage, sometimes we argue. In the family, sometimes we argue. In ministry, sometimes we argue. Nothing wrong with that. Do not be discouraged when there were, there were people that you love, they don't understand or misunderstand you. Or sometimes they even criticize you. It's okay because Peter were being criticized in the worst two. It stated so. But what happened is, let's learn from Peter. What Peter did is, with love, with peace, being a peacemaker, he explained it nicely and soundly. Do you know what? When Peter did that, in the end, if, when you read with me, in the end of the scripture, you will realize, as long as you do the right thing, even though you move too fast, forward with strength and courage, as long as you are doing what the Lord is telling you, with, with confirmation, after confirmation, not just out of naive or out of your own flesh, then in the end, what happened is, this group of apostles, the brothers, they then give praise to Jesus for what happened in the house of Cornelius. Later, when you read with me, you realize that they then glorify God. They were, they, they were, 
They felt awesome with what happened in the house of Cornelius. And then they become Peter's team. They become part of his team. They become his friend again. Work together again. For the sake of the kingdom of God. For the sake of M100. Therefore, my friend, don't be discouraged whenever there are things arises in your life. Whenever your relationship face a certain challenge or certain storm and wave, remember this, through thick and thin, the Lord will give you wisdom and strength to explain things, to make things back to order. He will give you love and peace. And through your explanation or your decision or your words, it will bring them back to Jesus. This is very important, especially in your family in the marketplace and in the church. Let us learn from Peter because in the end of the day, they work together once again after they realize that God is with them and God is doing certain things or great things through Peter's life. Moving on, verse 5. Verse 5, it says, Peter then explained, I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending, being let down from heaven by its four corners. And it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey and reptiles and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I say, by no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. Here was over a moment. So Peter began to explain that one day he was at Joppa, he was praying. In the chapter 10, it stated that he was hungry. But yet he still prayed. And therefore, suddenly there's, there, there was a vision came down from heaven straight to his face. You know, God placed this vision right before his eye. Although this is a vision, but to Peter at that time, it was so real. It was so real. And then God said, Peter, kill and eat these unclean reptiles. You know, for the Jewish custom, in the Old Testament, they could not eat certain animals with, um, you know, with, uh, or uh, like for example, frogs they couldn't eat. Why about Chinese? We eat, right? Tin kai, you know. Um, and then uh, like turtle, tortoise, all this, they cannot eat. They cannot eat pig, the Jewish custom. But then the Lord said, Peter, whatever I had blessed, Whatever I have put to you in front of you, do not say it is unclean. So, kill it and eat it. Do you know what, church? There are times that God placed certain things in your life. That it was so real, doesn't matter if it's vision or in your real life, they, you know, prophetically, from this event, what I receive is that some of you out there, you are facing with certain things that you felt, Lord, this is not proper for me to take it. It's not proper. This is unclean. Why is it, Lord, you want me to face this issue? Why is it, Lord, that you want to place it right before my eyes? I, I'm doing the right thing all the while. I'm serving you. I love you. I worship you. I give tithes. I'm a wholehearted Christian. I preach the gospel. I make disciples. But why, Lord, at this point of time, especially during this COVID, those the cases are begin to subside. But yet, inwardly, in our spiritual being, at the same time, in our physical life, the financial stress, the family, the marriage, the children that we have, things, you know, problems become to occur in our life over and over again. You try to get rid of it. You try to be strong. You wanted to move forward. But yet, the things that is being placed in front of you are the things that you don't wish to take. You don't wish this to continue happen in your life. You wish that, Lord, please take away this unclean food. You don't want to take it. 
It's very hard, very difficult for you to even imagine to put it in your mouth. The taste. You know, in life, it's not always sweet, my friend. There are things happen, happen. Because God had a great plan for you. There are things in life that you wish that the Lord, if can, take it away. Because it's not your custom. It's not the way you bring, you bring, bring brought up in your family. It's not your culture. It's not your language. It's not your practice. It's not even your theology. You know, to Peter, it's exactly like that. What he's trying to tell God, what he's trying to debate at the time with the Holy Spirit is that, God, this is not my culture. This is not my custom. I'm a Jewish. How could I take this? How could I eat this? You know, there are times when you, 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 you felt like you, you are so innocent in certain things. You felt that this, these are the things that, you know, that is really breaking your heart. But you have no choice but to face it, but to eat it. And, and you refuse because there is certain fear in your heart and fear leads to rejection. You, you try to reject whatever God placed in front of you. In the business, in the marketplace, in certain crises that you are facing right now, in the marriage, with your children, in the ministry, in the church, there are certain things. And these things had caused us fear in your life that you wish to reject it like Peter. And fear will cause you unable to move forward because you fear of changes. You don't want to change. You want to remain with your Jewish custom. You wanted to remain with what you believe. You wanted to remain with your theology. But what happened here is this. God told Peter, whatever I have blessed, whatever I place in front of you, whatever is from me, all the crises that you are having right now, all the troubles, all the issues, all the conflicts, all the problems, all the stress, all the issues, be in the church, in the marketplace, in the world, whatever it is, all this, God say, whatever I place in front of you, prophetically from this scripture, do not call it unclean. In other words, God is training you, your spiritual heart, your spiritual muscle, to be receptive towards new things, to be receptive towards certain food that you don't wish to take, towards certain issue that you don't wish to eat, you don't wish to taste, you don't wish to put in your mouth. You know, there are times during this COVID that it felt so hard, you find it so hard to take it. But you know what, church? There's a good news today. This scripture, this event, prophetically, is to encourage you that God is training you to be a receptive children of God. Be receptive always in your heart. Do not have fear because fear will cause you to become a children of God that is reluctant to be receptive. You'll be very reluctant to, re to receive anything from the Lord. Because why? Because your heart had been trapped by certain boundary in the past. Remember what Pastor Philip said, enlarge your trend, spread abroad to the light, to the left. You have to stretch out, be receptive. Whatever things got placed in your life right now, do not call it uncommon. Do not call it unclean. There are certain goodness in it. There are certain greatness or transformation in it. So trust Him. Be receptive. This is a time for you to be receptive, your heart to be enlarged as big as you can. Be it for the sake of M100 in reaching out to the lost soul, helping the poor, preaching the gospel in terms of even in the marketplace, if God wanted you to step out and do something about your career, don't sit there and wait the money to drop from heaven. You got to do something with your debts. You got to do something. You got to find a job once again. Do not wait for help. Do not go here and there just to, to borrow money again and over again and again. 
Do not keep borrow from the bank. This is not the solution, my friends. Running away from your problems, trying to escape from the food that God is placing in front of you is not the solution. In the world, yes, this is what the people did out there, but not in God's kingdom. And God, through His Scripture, reminds you there was once this great mighty Peter, apostle who stood up and preached, 3,000 men got saved, and yet he needed to face such great challenge, challenge that he never faced before. To eat the reptiles, these are the things that he had never encountered before, but yet God is a good God. There are greater agenda behind all this, my friend, which you couldn't see right now, but doesn't mean it, not, it doesn't exist. And therefore, moving on, chapter 11, verse 11 to 12 say, And behold, at that very moment, three men arrived at the house in which we were sent to me from Caesarea, which is Cornelius' men. And verse 12, noted here, and the Holy Spirit told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. You see, here, the Holy Spirit told Peter, make no distinction. Whatever comes from the Holy Spirit, you know, one of the work of the Holy Spirit is that make no decision. Be it young or old, be it good things or bad things, be it good times or bad times, be it physical church or online church. Be it whatever means that God is putting before you, you got to love them, you got to encourage them, you got to jump into the presence of God, love the young one and the old one, be at peace with everyone God placed in front of you, make no distinction, even though it got nothing to do with you, even though you are not wrong, even though you felt you are right, but yet. Make no distinction. This is what the Holy Spirit work in the church and in the world. It's time for you to start be receptive and do the right thing for the Lord because He wants to help you. As I've told you, Holy Spirit is here to help you. He's not here to make you more worse than before. He's here to help you to become better. If there are certain issues in your life that God wants you to learn, Make no distinction. Be it your wife is a good wife or not. Be it your husband is a good husband or not. Be it your children is right now as a good term with you or not. Make no distinction. Even though the leaders that you are leading, sometimes you felt they are not lovely. Even though the people you are trying to reach out, you felt they are not lovely. Make no distinction. Share the gospel. Share the YouTube link. Share the CYC English channel. Share the event that we are having. Share the connect group activity with them because God is going to move both physically and on sky. Amen. Chapter 11, verse 13 to 18. Lastly, follow me closely. The last part is this. And he told us how he had seen the angels stand in the house and say, send to Joppa and bring Simon who is called Peter. Verse 14, he will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your households. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? Look carefully, verse 19. When they heard this thing, they fell silent and they glorified God. See? Saying then to the Gentiles also, God has granted repentance that leads to life. You see, the apostles who against Peter's decision at first, here at the verse 18, they begin to glorify God. They begin to glorify God. They fell silent because they heard God is working powerfully. And deep in their heart, they were convicted that this is God works in amongst them. And that gospel had spread to the Gentiles and the Holy Spirit had fell on them. Do you know what, church? When you become receptive towards anything that God placed in front of you, like Peter, when he learned and trained himself to be receptive 
even though it's very hard for him to take, even though there are certain concerns or fear or worriness in him, but yet, because of his reception towards the food that God placed in front of him, there, God makes a new thing happen. God opened up a new revival, a new way. History were being made at the very time. At that very time. Gentiles were saved for the very first time ever in the history of the church. And therefore, my friends, do you know why God placed those unclean food in front of you sometimes? Not because He's a bad God. It's because He wants you to enter into something new. He wants you to move forward. Forward with strength and courage because by doing that, something great is going to happen. Things that Peter never imagined before. His jaw would drop at the time when he saw the Cornelius and the household. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit. They speak in tongues. Chapter 10 stated, Suddenly all of them speak in tongues. Shalalala. Never ever happened in the history of Jewish custom at that time. Never ever had happened during, ever since the Pentecost day. They had never seen anything like that before. Is that your prayer? My friend, is that your cry deep in your heart that you wanted your marriage, your children, your, your, ma your financial, your, the things that is going on in your life, your church, your cell group, your ministry? Is that your cry and your prayer that God is going to give you a breakthrough? Is it your prayer that you are asking for greater things to happen in your life, in this nation? If that is so, then the good news is this. Be receptive. Be receptive towards whatever is being placed in front of you right now. Because once you become receptive, you will then become responsive. What happened to Peter is that not just being receptive, but then he responded by faith with action and obedience. His heart is difficult, but yet it's doable. Let me repeat that, my friends. It's very hard sometimes for you to obey, to act out of faith in such circumstances, to respond and to be receptive, but yet it's doable. Look at Noah. It's very hard for him to understand there were no rains at all at his time, but why is it God said there will be a heavy rain that will cover the entire earth? So therefore, build an ark at the age of 600 years old. It's difficult to eat the food that's being placed, the task that's been given, the issues that he had in front of him, but yet it's doable. As long as you have faith and as long as you act upon it, it's doable. Look at Abraham. During his age of 100 years old, it's impossible to get pregnant with his wife Sarah, and yet they give birth to Isaac. At that point of time, when Isaac started to grow up, God said, send him to the mount and sacrifice him, your only son. It's so difficult, my friend. Imagine that if that happened to you and God wanted to take over your family. He wanted your son, your children, your only son, the, the things that you love most. He wanted here and then. What would you do? You know, Abraham with a heavy heart, I believe, as a father, with the knife on his hand, he prepared to kill. The moment he did that, God says, stop. But his response and his reception have proven to all of us that it's doable because there were so many flaws in Abraham's character. Remember that he forsake his wife when they went to Egypt. He's not a good man in marriage, when the wife asked her him to get a concubine and have son with the concubine, he just did that. You know, Abraham is not perfect like you and I, but yet he obeyed, but yet he responded, but yet he had shown us it's doable because he's just like you and I, just a natural man, but with the strength of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I wanted to encourage you today. 
be receptive and be responsive. Because by doing that, you will learn. You will learn in the course and your journey in the walk of faith. You realize that a lot of time, when you start to be receptive, then you realize response is very important. When the moment you respond to the things that God asks you to eat, you realize that it's not always the strategy first. It's not always the understanding first of how and what to do. It's not always that you are ready first. Then only God will help you to overcome the issue that you are having right now. No, it's always your response, how you respond to it. Or your response will make things forward, my friend. When you respond with the fruits of the Holy Spirit, when you respond with love, with faith, with patience, with peace, with joy, then you will start to realize that your family is moving, your marriage is moving, the church is moving, your leadership is growing. Because that is how God's work through the faith of your response. And you may ask this, Pastor, why me? Peter could have asked that question, I believe. Why me? Why not John? Why not James? Why not the rest of the apostles? Why me? Why you? Why is it out of so many Christians or people in this world, why is it that you got to face this type of challenge or issue or troubles in life? Why you? Why COVID happened in your lifetime, not the earlier decade? Why not the next generation? Why you? Why Peter? Because God, because God trusted Peter. Because God trusted you. And He wants you to encounter such great revival, history, transformation, new things firsthand, not hearsay. I repeat that God wants you to encounter Him firsthand. No longer hearsay. No longer hearing people say that God is good all the time. No longer that you're hearing people say how God worked greatly in their life. But that you are going to encounter Him firsthand. In your marriage, in your ministry, in your career, in your future. And He, and he picked you because He trusts you, He trusted you so as to be a blessing to the others. You know, God trusts you so much that He, he knows that you can become a blessing to others, not the Christian besides you, not your siblings, not your friends, but you. God trusts you and He's going to use you mightily. You know, Peter had become a blessing to the disciples, right? He had become a blessing to the Gentiles. Of, although after that, the one who continued such ministry to the Gentiles is Apostle Paul, not Peter. But yet, in this event alone, Peter himself had encountered all this first hand. He is the first man to reach out to the Gentiles. He is the first man to become the blessing to the Gentiles, both Gentiles and Jews. Why Jew? Why not the rest? Why you are the one that got picked for M100? Why you are the one that got placed in certain issues, conflict or troubles in your life right now? Because God wants you to become blessing to others so that people can glorify God through you. Your life is to always glorify God, not to make people fall, not to make people condemn, not to make people felt weak, but that you are going to be blessed to those around you because so many people who are very weak right now, don't add to that, but add blessing to people. Amen? Don't deduct blessing, that God had given to you, but add it, add on it, add more blessing in your life, so that by that you have more, um, you have more blessing to give to people around you. 
Lastly, if one plus one equals to two, if good things plus good God equals to good, good God, then in spiritual mathematics, bad things, food that is unclean, things that is very hard for you to take and eat right now at the point of time in your life, bad things plus good God still equals to good, good God. Because one plus one always is two. Same goes with our great God. Bad things, uncommon food, unclean food that is placed in front of you, plus good God is still good, good God. And the way forward for you and your family and the church and your career and your future and your marriage and love relationship and friendship the way forward is to be receptive and responsive. Amen? Amen? For in His way, He will provide. He will provide. At just the perfect time, everything that's good and right. For in His way, He will provide to bless this life of mine for in this way he will provide at just the perfect time everything that's good and right for in his way he will provide to bless this life. Oh my, one more time, come on, church, for in His way, for in His way, He will provide at just the perfect time. Everything that's good and right, for in His way. Bless this life, oh my, for in His way, for in His way, He will provide to bless this life, oh my, to bless this life. Let's close our eyes. Let's bow our head. Let's, help, let's put our hand together like this. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for today. Your scripture, your revelation, the prophetic words. Lord, I pray that each and everyone who is in front of the screen right now, be blessed with your word. Let us have faith in you. Continue to move forward with strength and courage. Be that as it may, doesn't matter good food or bad food doesn't matter good things or bad things doesn't matter is a clean food or unclean food whatever Lord you place in front of us Lord give us courage to be receptive to it to take and eat whatever you give to us though sometimes it's very hard but Lord we know all things move together in a purpose in a good way because bad thing plus good God still equals to good good God we believe in your revival will happen in our life. Transformation, blessing, and miracle will continue to move in our nations. Thank you, God. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. 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 Give the love big clap this morning. Hallelujah. I hope you are blessed. Continue to stay with us. Follow us closely in the Connect group. May the good Lord bless you. And we we'll see you again next week. Stay safe. God bless. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 to 10 says, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your harvest. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Today, let us give off our tithes and offering. As you do that, may the heavens be open unto you 
and your family as God blesses the cheerful giver. Here 